Hey everybody, I'm back with a whole new video here for you. Today's video is a, a video log, uh, so I'm not going to be doing uh, any drawing. Um, so this will be my uh, third video log, I think. I think, something like that. Uh, I want to do more videos like this. Um, it's hard though because I have a hard time finding topics to talk about. Uh, but this is a topic that uh, has recently come up that I find very interesting. And uh, I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. COVID-19. So, um, yeah, COVID-19 has shut the world down. COVID-19, or the coronavirus, has shut down countries, it's shut down eco economies, and tons and tons of industries and businesses. Um, but one interesting industry in particular that COVID-19 has completely shut down um, is the comic book industry. Not only has COVID-19 shut down the comic book industry, it has caused the comic book industry to completely collapse. Uh, comic book, the comic book industry has been through uh, ups and downs through the decades. Uh, during World War II, it had trouble. Uh, in the late, or uh, in the 90s, <laughs> earlier late, I don't remember, it was in the 90s, comics were in big trouble, uh, there was a lot of concern for collapse, and it almost did, uh, but COVID-19 uh, has done what the past hasn't, it has uh, caused the industry to completely collapse. Uh, and how did it happen? Um, well, uh, it's kind of COVID nineteen was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, the comics have been on the decline in the past ten years, um, at least in quality uh, and sales and such. Um, comic books uh, now the, the 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 specs the the stats say that comic books have had bigger sales than they ever had before. And it is true to an extent. Uh, the, the comic book companies like Marvel and DC, they're making a ton of bank off their comics uh, as of last year. Um, but the comic books are not actually selling from the comic book stores. Uh, how does this work? Well, uh, comic books are, uh, were distributed. Uh, th there's basically an in-between company a distributor where that the distributor uh, takes all the comics that are made from the companies and distributes them to the stores, uh, comic shops and bookstores and such. Um, and the comic book distributor for the past few decades, since the 80s, uh, has been uh, Diamond Comic Distributors. Uh, and they've held a, basically a monopoly They've been the only distributors for the past few decades. Um, and they, uh, once when the COVID-19 or the coronavirus uh, broke out, Diamond Comics uh, shut down and said, we're not going to distribute uh, comics. Uh, we're not going to pay for any new material. Uh, we're completely, completely shutting down. Um, and that is basically how this whole industry collapsed because of that. So comic book shops who are already struggling to sell comics, uh, which I'll get to that later on on why they were already struggling to sell comics, um, are now unable to sell any comics. They don't have any new material to sell or try to sell <laughs> um, because the distributor, the in-between person, is no longer taking any new comics uh, to the shelves, and uh, that's a problem because comic book shops that that it depend depending on where these shops are, these shops even though they would have to close their doors, they could still do uh, roadside pickup um, or delivery. They could deliver mail deliver to uh, places uh, to people that wanted to buy comics. Uh, but now, instead of having that option, they have no option but to shut down. And um, as a result of this, struggling comic shops have no new material to uh, give to re uh, sell to readers. Um, we'll probably 
uh, these businesses will probably have to close in uh, forever. Um, it's going to put a lot of shops out of business. Um, and uh, this this whole comic book collapse thing, uh, I have seen come in along with a lot of other comic fans. Comic book fans have uh, noticed, like have been saying, eventually the industry is going to collapse if they keep up the pattern that they're on. Um, and that pattern has been, uh, by many companies, they've had some bad habits that, in my personal opinion, they should change to get more readers because they've been losing readers for the past decade. So I have uh, a list of things that I think the comic book industry uh, needs to start practicing uh, in order to get back on their feet when this whole virus thing is over. Uh, this is just my opinion and uh, basically what I think about the whole situation. Uh, so first off, they need to fix this thing that caused the collapse in the first place, and that's having one single distributor that they depend on. Uh, Diamond Comics has been uh, the sole distributor for all the major companies, Marvel, DC, and all those big names. Um, and basically when a company has only one distributor, they have, they're depending on this one company to get their product out, uh, and that thing, and that company shuts down, they're, they're stuck. They don't have anyone else to, uh, distribute for them. They don't have a, they don't have a second option, a plan B. Um, so the companies need to have more than one distributor available at least. Like, there needs to be competition. There can't be, uh, a monopoly. Um, DC Comics, uh, recently, uh, just a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, uh, has started working with two different distributors, um, and is slowly in the process of distributing, uh, their comics now. Um, they're, they're testing the waters with some new distributors, uh, and there's been a lot of controversy with that, uh, a lot of people have opinions on it, um, but just from a good business standpoint, uh, companies should have the options for distributors. Uh, another thing that should change is um, companies, uh, for a long time, uh, comic book companies have not, uh, have had a policy, a uh, no return policy. Uh, so when uh, comic books are sent to the comic book stores uh, through the distributor, um, comic book shops cannot return comics that don't sell. Um, and that causes these shops to have a huge loss of, uh, of money. They, they lose a lot of money over this, over comics that don't sell. Um, when, so when, uh, it's very hard for a shop to know what books they should order and how many they should order because they don't know if it's going to sell. Um, say they order like 20 issues of Spider-Man and the issue does very poorly and they only sell five issues, they've lost, like, they've lost a ton of money. They have 15 extra copies that no one wants. Um, and this has been happening for shop, with shops, um, very commonly now in the recent, the past 10 years with the, the comics that are being released. Um, now, uh, now there could be some, uh, rules for this, uh, companies could say, like, we will accept returns, uh, except for first issues, uh, say, like, the, the first issue of a series, there are no returns on, um, something of that nature, um, to kind of, uh, so that companies aren't, uh, returning too many, it, just to balance it out, I guess. Uh, so, third thing that comic companies should start, uh, uh, doing when this whole thing is over is that in this, these next few things really go into the comics themselves and their quality 
and uh, just what kind of comics they are. Um, I love comic books, and I, uh, man, I, I'm trying to remember some of the first ones I read. I, th I think some of the first, the first comics I read were some of my dad's uh, old comic books that he had from when he was a kid. These comics were like from the 80s. Some of them were uh, Looney Tunes, uh, some of them were the, the Disney uh, cartoon comics. Um, he had a few uh, Archie comics. I remember reading a bunch of his Archie comics. A bunch of old comic books. They were they were so much fun to read. I read them over and over and over. Uh, I also love superheroes. Um, and I started reading uh, superhero comics. Mainly, I think I read, most of the comics I read were Marvel comics. I can't remember reading many uh, DC comics. Um, but I think the first Marvel comic I read was uh, Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars. Uh, that was a cool, cool issue. I think it was the first issue of Secret Wars. Um, and the first comic book that I bought for myself was uh, actually fairly recent. It was Invincible Iron Man number one uh, from tw 2015, I think. 2015 or 2016, whenever that series was rebooted, uh, and I loved the first five issues of that series, Invincible Iron Man. I loved the art and the, the story. It was just perfection. Uh, I got off on a little, a little bunny trail there, but anyway, um, so, Quamic, eh, Quamic, Quamic, uh, comic quality has, in my opinion, uh, decreased, uh, in the past 10 years. Um, and I've read comics from all the different generations, all the different decades, and, uh, the re the last decade, they haven't been so good, basically, and it's like been one out of ten, you get a good comic. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the writing and the, the art, uh, too. Uh, it just depends on the book. Um, many, many of the writers have taken, uh, well, how do I put this? Like, instead of writing a good uh, story, they're concerned about pushing a political agenda. Uh, now, I don't want to take any sides here. I have my own personal opinions, um, uh, but I don't like to share them uh, very much because everyone just gets so... it just creates confl conflict, and I'm someone who does not like conflict. I'm a pretty uh, peaceful, simple guy. <laughs> But when a company uh, focuses on a political uh, agenda or takes a political side over their business, um, it's, it's not good business. Politics kills business, depending on what business you're in. Um, if your goal is to sell um, amazing stories uh, with uh, incredible art, um, comic books, if you're trying to sell fun adventure comic books, sci-fi comic books, whatever, um, it's pretty evident in the past 10 years that politics doesn't work very well. Um, or at least you need to have some balance. Uh, it's been pretty one-sided. And, um, it's just, uh, from a business standpoint, companies should first Focus on writing a good story, and the politics will follow if the story needs it. You should build the the politics into the story. You shouldn't build the story into the politics, uh, in my opinion. Some some uh, comic books can be very political and can be very good um, on both sides. Uh, they can uh, comic books in the past have uh, dealt with. Um, very serious issues uh, in politics. They've taken side, and, and really, comic books have always taken political sides um, to a certain extent. Uh, basically, before America was involved in World War II, uh, the guys who created Captain America, the 
in the very first issue had Captain America punching Hitler in the face. We weren't in the war yet, and that raised a lot of issues. People were like, hey, we, we don't want to get involved in this yet. And um, so that raised a lot of issues. Um, during the 1960s uh, and 70s, comic books uh, took a big stand for civil rights uh, with X-Men. Uh, X-Men represented civil rights in the, in the civil rights movement uh, for equal rights for all humans and all that. And um, so they've always taken a side, but in the recent years, they've been, um, basically, there's a very consistent pattern in comics where certain characters represent certain uh, people in everyday society. And, um, like, and it's, and it's very, uh, very consistent through almost all these comics. Um, so just an ex as an example, um, basically in many of Mar most of Marvel comics, uh, usually, uh, the woman is a lesbian, she is very masculine, and she is the hero, uh, she has no weaknesses at all, and is always, um, uh, what's the word, um, always praised. Um, and then also, uh, many of the comics now, uh, depict, um, like the black, uh, a black male is the person that needs saving. Um, and then always, almost like 90% of the time, the white male is the villain. Um, and while there is nothing wrong with this sort of stuff in comics, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's a free country, there's free speech, people are allowed to write what they want, um, I have my own personal views on that stuff, um, but like I said, it's a free country, there's free speech, uh, people can, uh, write what they would like, um, however, when you have a certain audience who, like a very specific audience, um, you want to make sure that you're writing stories that are appealing to them. Now, uh, comics um, are generally read by young adult males. Um, basically, for uh, most comics are read from uh, guys who that are 20 to, I don't know, 40, 50 years old. <laughs> so there's a wide range there. Uh, now, you know, there are plenty of uh, women who read comics, and and, uh, and kids too, and uh, in the past, comics have been for kids, but generally, it's young adult to middle age guys that read comics, um, but, uh, so, so diversity, uh, is okay in comics, and is encouraged, you know, I, it would be pretty boring, uh, or pretty stale, um, and not very interested at all if every comic was written the same with the same type of characters in every story. And that is exactly what is going on in these comics. It's all about identity politics and um, not a good story. Um, and again, back to my, my point here, comics need to focus on first a good story uh, before they bring in the politics. If you have a good story, politics will fit in where they can and should. And that's, and you'll have great stories and you'll have readers, um, of all types. You'll, you'll bring in the readers, uh, when you write good stories that have plenty of diversity and aren't the same type of characters over and over. I cannot stress enough how important it is to uh, write a good comic story, uh, to write a good story. Um, I've, you know, I like, I love comic books, and uh, so like, I'm trying to think of like some of the best comics I've read, uh, and a lot of them are uh, from like, 
Oh, it ranges. Like, some of them were from, like, the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Infinity Gauntlet is one of my favorites uh, from Marvel. Um, and there were some really good ones in the 2000s. Uh, Secret, um, no, uh, Secret Invasion was really good. Uh, that was where, uh, Skrull aliens start invading Earth, and they're shapeshifters, so all these, half of the superheroes are aliens, and no one knows who to trust. It was a really good story. One of, I think one of my most favorite comics was in the 2000s. It was uh, Marvel's Civil War. Uh, and it was where uh, Captain America and Iron Man uh, and a bunch of the superheroes uh, take sides. And um, it's over whether or not superheroes should have, like, should um, reveal their secret identities should the government know who all these superheroes are and regulate all that stuff. It was an excellent, excellent story. Um, and uh, I've collected Avengers from like the 70s and 80s. I, um, it's one of my favorite series to collect. There's so many good random stories in those. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice from all this talking. <laughs> also, I love Batman. There's some great Batman stories. Um, so, uh, I used to buy comics every week. I spent between 10 to $40 a week, depending on how many comics, uh, I was interested in were coming out, but each week I would get comics at uh, a local bookstore right in town. And then one year they were like, we're, we gotta stop, we, we gotta stop selling these. Uh, sorry about that, but we're losing money. No one's buying these comics except for you pretty much. And, uh, also those comics were coming from Diamond Distributors, um, and they, they often had issues with Diamond Distributors, but that's besides the point. They had to stop selling comics, and, uh, after that, um, and at the time, at the same time, I was starting to get kind of tired of these comics. I'm like, there's, there's nothing really interesting here. Half of these... I, I buy and then I, I don't read them because I stopped caring and all I did was I felt obligated to buy them because that's another thing. I felt obligated to buy them because the, the shop orders these months ahead before they come out and that's another problem with it. They had to order these months ahead and when they get them, uh, so Basically, if I tell them, hey, I'm not going to buy these comics anymore, they're like, well, we're still going to be getting these comics for you within the next two months here. So, there's there was a lot of issues there, too. Um, but after they stopped selling comics, I, I pretty much stopped buying American comics uh, almost completely. I still get a couple now and then, like collected issues, or... Uh, Occasionally, I'll, when I when I am when I'm near a comic shop, I'll grab a few uh, retro, very old comics from the from the past. Um, but lately, uh, I have kind of switched my interest over to uh, the eastern side of the industry, and that's uh, the the manga comics. Uh, one in particular is My Hero Academia. Uh, I love that series so much because. It's just an amazing comic about superheroes, and it's a very fresh take on superheroes. Um, it's a, I have like, I think I have all, I have almost all of them. I have all, all, all the books except for six of them. There's like 23 books, and I have, uh, 17 of them. Um, but it's, it's basically about, um, the world, uh, like 80% of the population, the world's population has superpowers. Um, and the main character is a kid who is born without superpowers. And he wants to be a superhero, but he's one of the 20% that doesn't have superpowers. Uh, but then, when the number one hero, he's basically Japan's version of Superman. Uh, when, this, when he meets his hero, um, and the hero recognizes that he has the traits of a superhero, uh, he basically passes on 
if you're basically granted, um, sorry, got a little mixed up there. Uh, basically, he is the next in line to inherit this uh, guy's superpower, and he he gets his he inherits the powers, and it's a series about him learning to be the number one superhero. Um, but this the characters the just some very interesting uh, character designs and character stories. Um, it's an excellent series, and the art is incredible. Um, manga. Um, there are many styles of uh, Eastern uh, comic books, but the art is incredible. Um, but anyway, um, America. Comic book, American comic book industry uh, <laughs> needs to take notes on writing good comic book stories. So, uh, something else to note. Um, comics are also sold digitally. Um, but, well, uh, digital comics don't sell very well compared to the physical comic. Uh, someone who loves comics, they're going to want the physical comic. That's, that's half of what comic books is, is having the comic to collect and to hang on to for years and um so digital isn't as popular and um uh, during this whole collapse companies most of the companies have decided not to do digital comics even though there is that that area of business they can continue to make money with digital comics even if it isn't as much um but co most companies have chosen not to do that. Now, I think DC Comics has started to slowly release new stuff uh, digitally, as well as with those new distributors. Uh, but there's no, there's really not very many new digital comics coming out. Uh, so the comic book industry has collapsed. Uh, it will restart again when this whole virus thing uh, passes by, and things start to slowly kick back up, comics will come back, but it'll be different, it'll be smaller, lots of shops will go out of business because of this, um, and, um, so another thing, like I've said, uh, like in this video, comic companies need to have options for distributors, uh, they need to allow returns, um, to an extent, so companies aren't losing so much money, or uh, shops aren't losing so much money, um, and also by allowing returns, that will allow companies to truly know what comics are selling and not selling, and what they need to change with their comics. Um, the companies need to focus on writing good stories, and not put identity, politics, and political agendas first. Uh, they can have those in there, but you need to be writing a good story first, a good comic, before you put that uh, put that in there. Um, again, it's a free country. There's, it's free speech. I support uh, the free speech and all that, um, but there should be diversity. Uh, of all kinds, taking all sides, um, and just really good stories. Uh, politics should not be the focus when it comes to comics. This is all in my opinion. Um, uh, so people are welcome to their, their own opinions, but this is my personal opinion on, from a business standpoint, what will be good for the industry. But anyway, um, and so this this is also this whole shutdown and collapse has also led to people creating their own comics. Uh, crowdfunded comics are on the rise like crazy. Um, all sorts of people are starting to write their own comics. Um, and in a way, this it's kind of a good thing. It's it's keeping people uh, in business and uh, keeping an income coming. Uh, despite the comic book shutdown, uh, by having people uh, writing their own comics and hiring people to draw, or vice versa, um, or in hiring people to print, uh, and etc. etc. Um, 
it has basically it could be the start of whole new comic companies and comic series and all that um so it's on the rise um and basically before this whole thing took off i i have taken the initiative to finally start writing my own comic that i've had an idea for um in my head for the past year two years or so um and it's coming along slowly. Uh, once school is over next week, I will have plenty of time to really focus on writing it. I think I have about 30 pages written so far. And I, it keeps getting bigger as I write it. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that turns out. We'll see where it goes. It could be just a, 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 a personal thing for me, but it could lead to other stuff. But anyway, um, and then... Uh, Basically, this 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 could could <laughs> stuttering over my words. Oh, I've been talking so much. I think this is the most talking I've done in a week. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, this concludes my video. Um, and just uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video log. It's a, uh, it's just a. Uh, a interesting topic, a topic that I found interesting, and I hope that uh, you maybe found it interesting too. And I hope I didn't drag too long on, on the video for you. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos coming. Uh, I'm sh I'll be sure to have more next week. And um, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. And uh, the type of, if you would like to see more videos like this, talking about uh, comics, uh, talking about uh, comic book art and writing, um, and just some of that stuff, let me know if you want to see more of this, um, and just kind of tips you may have for my next videos. Um, and also share this video. If you know people that would find this video interesting, please share it. Uh, I would love for people to... Uh, uh, be finding out about my videos and, uh, just kind of the stuff I'm, uh, working at and, uh, attempting to, uh, accomplish. So anyway, uh, thanks so much and adios.